Did you know that the headquarters of the Illuminati are supposedly hidden within the Denver International Airport? The conspiracy runs deep. Literally, the headquarters are believed to be hidden deep underground in a secret bunker beneath the terminals. Believers of these Creative conjectures point to a few specific pieces of evidence. For one, the airport's construction came in $2 billion over budget and was mired in what critics say was a suspicious level of secrecy. Then, there's a time capsule kept in the airport set to be opened in 2094. It's emblazoned with an icon of a Masonic square and compass, which is associated with the Freemasons and, by extension, the Illuminati. And there are plaques stating that the Denver International Airport was funded by the New World Airport Commission, which Sounds awfully close to New World Order, which is the center of the Illuminati's reported goals, an authoritarian government that controls, well, everything. Hi, I'm Justin Dodd, welcome to a special bonus episode of The List Show, from my living room. Today we're talking about the ever-mysterious organization that is supposedly pulling all of society's strings, the Illuminati. But uh, before we continue, I'm just going to need all of you to sign this uh, NDA real quick, in blood. Pretty standard stuff, I'll just grab it. Let's start off with a very important fact. There really was, indisputably, an actual secret group that called itself the Illuminati. The Bavarian Illuminati was founded in May of 1776 in the electorate of Bavaria, which is part of modern-day Germany. The group was founded by Adam Weishaupt, who was a philosopher and professor who taught at the University of Ingolstadt. He created his own secret society so he could connect with other free-thinking dudes, and thus the Order of the Illuminati was born. The Illuminati was not always called the Illuminati. That name, which now carries a cool, mysterious, posh but possibly evil sensibility, came a bit later. Originally, Weishaupt had called his group the Perfectibilists, which is arguably a terrible name, it sounds silly and I hate it, but another top contender? The Bee Order. Yeah, as in the Order of the Bees. I mean, I personally would love to join a secret club where our uniforms were cool black and yellow striped jackets, but that's just me. Eventually, Illuminati was chosen. Weishaupt was able to sneak in an animal reference, however, by adopting the Owl of Minerva, or the Owl of Athens, as the Illuminati's symbol. The Owl represented intelligence, as Minerva was the Roman goddess of wisdom. It's no bee, but it'll do. The goal of the Illuminati was to encourage a rational society. It was pretty in line with the values of the Enlightenment as a whole, seeking to promote individualism, rational thinking, and knowledge. Weishaupt argued that the prevailing systems of the day leave us under the dominion of political and religious prejudices. The Illuminati, on the other hand, frees from all religious prejudices, cultivates the social virtues, and animates them by a great, a feasible, and speedy prospect of universal happiness in a state of liberty and moral equality, freed from the obstacles which subordination, rank, and riches continually throw in our way. Maybe I'm just a sucker for run-on sentences, but the Illuminati doesn't sound half bad. Well, until you hear about its, uh, strict membership requirements. Only select people could join the Illuminati. First things first, only men were allowed to join. Secondly, no Jewish people were admitted. Which, I'm sorry, but didn't I just read a whole mission statement about avoiding religious prejudices? <laughs> the Illuminati, on the other hand, frees from all religious prejudices. <laughs> okay, just checking. Next, you had to be 30 years old or younger. The group believed anyone older to be too conservative and rigid in their ways, because <laughs> You don't want rigid thinking to get in the way of your no-girls-allowed group with an arbitrary ageist cutoff. Other requirements included being wealthy, well-educated, and coming from a good family. And every new member had to be vetted by a current member. This is sounding less like a free-thinking society and more like a glorified frat house. At its largest, the Bavarian Illuminati had about 2,000 members. It began to grow quickly because its first members joined the Freemasons as well and began to recruit other men there. Eventually, the substantial Illuminati population consisted of doctors, lawyers, politicians, and intellectuals. Young, wealthy, male intellectuals, that is. There were levels of enlightenment that members had to work through. You know, like a video game. Originally, there were only three enlightenment levels. Novice, Minervil, and Illuminated Minervil. A few years after its founding, a member named Baron von Neig revised the system a little bit. After that, there were as many as 13 levels, known as degrees, which were then grouped into three different classes. Von Neig was inspired by the system used by the Freemasons. Once a member reached the highest level, they would achieve philosophical illumination, and he was granted the title King. Hey, we stand a philosophically illuminated king. Members of the Illuminati spoke in code and used pseudonyms, which were usually the names of famous historical figures. Weishaupt, for example, was known as Spartacus. 
All written correspondence between members was in cipher, you know, in case it was confiscated. Even town names would be replaced by various arbitrary words. It's also said the Illuminati used invisible ink in many of their letters, which, <laughs> I mean, that's just good fun. The Illuminati was exposed and disbanded not even 10 years after its founding. A former member by the name of Joseph Utschneider wrote a letter to the Grand Duchess of Bavaria exposing the group's members and their beliefs. Her husband, the Duke of Bavaria, issued an edict in 1784 that banned any unauthorized societies, and then, a year later, made a new rule that explicitly banned the Illuminati. By 1787, membership was punishable by death. Yeesh. Weishaupt was banished from Bavaria and the Illuminati was no more. Or was it? Well, it depends who you ask. For centuries, conspiracy theories about the Illuminati's supposed continued existence have cropped up around the world. Heck, even George Washington, who was a master mason, wrote a letter addressing the threat of the Illuminati. The idea is that not only are they still around, but they're working to establish a new world order, like I mentioned earlier, basically controlling the happenings of governments and societies across the globe. According to these theories, many members of the modern Illuminati are politicians and celebrities, and that these famous and rich people owe their success to the help of the secret organization. Historical figures rumored to be involved include Thomas Jefferson, FDR, Winston Churchill, and John D. Rockefeller. Some modern celebrities who are supposed members are Dr. Dre, Madonna, Bono, Justin Bieber, Nicki Minaj, Whitney Houston, and naturally, Jay-Z and Beyonce. Skeptics of these theories, however, contend that y'all haters corny with that Illuminati mess. Food for thought. Thanks for watching Mental Floss on YouTube. Remember to subscribe so you can catch a new episode of our original series like Misconceptions, where we debunk common myths, and Food History, where we explore the weird stories that lead to your favorite meals. Those go up every Wednesday. And if you're lucky, you'll get some bonus facts throughout the week as well. And just remember, if you mention to anyone what I've told you today, we know where you live. <laughs> just kidding. Or am I? No, I am. <laughs>